As we know that a national economy is linked to the world economy through the trade in goods and services and through the trade in the financial assets. In this module, we will study the linkages of a domestic economy with the world economy through capital market. Capital market in international economics refers to the market where financial assets are traded like stocks, bonds and other liquid assets. Financial capital is much more mobile than physical capital which includes land, machinery, etc. which are difficult to transfer from one country to another. Movement of financial capital from hereafter we will refer financial capital simply as capital only is much easier. Other than stocks and bonds, capital transfers from one country to another in the form of foreign portfolio investments, foreign direct investment and other bank transfers. The term capital mobility is used to describe this movement of capital from one country to another. According to the ease with which capital mobility occurs, it is divided into two categories, perfect capital mobility and imperfect capital mobility. Perfect capital mobility means that capital can be freely transferred from one country to another with the minimum cost without any barrier. The assumption of perfect capital mobility can be a reasonable first approximation when there is no political risk, the tax treatment is similar, transaction costs are negligible in relation to the size of the transaction and the economic agents are risk neutral with respect to gains and losses arising out of unanticipated exchange rate fluctuations. It also implies that the effect of changes in the wealth of the economic agents caused by the exchange rate changes are being ignored. Thus, any difference in the interest rate for any country from the world interest rate would provide an arbitrage opportunity leading to instantaneous and very high capital flows. This increase in the capital flows will ensure that under perfect capital mobility there is no opportunity of arbitrage under conditions of equilibrium and domestic interest rate of any economy would be same as the world interest rate. Imperfect capital mobility means that there are barriers to the flows of capital and it is expensive to freely transfer capital from one country to another. For instance, there are taxes on the capital transfers or tax on the profit earned through capital transfers or other rules and regulations that raise the cost of capital mobility. Sometimes without any government restrictions, capital is immobile. If the exchange rate of a country is highly volatile and the investors are risk averse and therefore reluctant to invest in such a country as they are worried about the devaluation of the currency which reduces the profitability of their investment. In all these circumstances, capital is not perfectly mobile and domestic interest rate need not to be equal to the world interest rate. The discussion on the concept of capital mobility in economics started during 1960s when two economists, Robert Mundell and Marcus Fleming discussed ISLM framework for an open economy. Though both wrote separate papers, but the model as a whole depicting changes in ISLM framework is known as Mundell Fleming model. Mundell's paper Capital Mobility and Stabilization Policy under Fixed and Flexible Exchange Rate 1963 analyzes the case of perfect capital mobility, whereas Fleming's paper Domestic Financial Policies under Fixed and under Floating Exchange Rates 1962 depicted the analysis of imperfect capital mobility. After studying this module, you shall be able to know the concept of perfect capital mobility understand the impact of perfect capital mobility, learn what Mundell Fleming model is and its three main equations, study the effect of changes in fiscal and monetary policy on the economy under perfect capital mobility, learn the concept of impossible trinity. Let us now discuss the impact of perfect capital mobility. There are certain positive and negative impacts of perfect capital mobility to an economy. Perfect capital mobility allows investment opportunities from the foreign countries without any barrier and hence helps in economic growth. However, there are certain negative effects of perfect capital mobility. For instance, due to a policy change, agents prefer to invest in foreign currency rather than in domestic currency. There will be a sudden outflow of currency 
leading to exchange rates volatility. Investors lose their confidence in investing a country where there is high volatility in exchange rates. Moreover, perfect capital mobility allows the transfer of crisis from one country to another. Since the markets are globalized and so is the banking system, any crisis appearing in one country will get passed on to other countries as well. We will now move on to the next topic which is Mundell Fleming model. Mundell Fleming model shows how the economy is affected under capital mobility using the ISLM framework. There are various assumptions of this model. This is a short run model where the economy is operating below its full employment level of output. The money wages are fixed and the price level is given. Balance of trade, trade in goods and services depends only on income and exchange rates. It is assumed that the Marshall Lerner elasticity's conditions are satisfied and there is no J curve effect. The main assumption is that the economy is a small open economy, too small to have any effect on the foreign income or the world interest rates. Under the assumption of perfect capital mobility, domestic securities are considered to be perfect substitutes of foreign securities and hence the domestic interest rates are equalized to the world interest rates. Mathematically, three equations describe the Mundell Fleming model. First equation is the equation for goods market equilibrium represented by the IS curve. Y is equals to C into Y minus T plus I which is a function of interest rate plus G plus NX which is a function of nominal exchange rate where y is equals to aggregate income or output c is the consumption expenditure which is a function of disposable income t is the taxes to the government i is the investment demand as a function of interest rate note that i is less than zero that is investment decreases with the increase in interest rates g stands for autonomous government expenditure and NX stands for net exports or exports less imports. Net exports are a function of real exchange rates that is small e where e is equals to e p star divided by p where capital E stands for nominal exchange rates, p star stands for world price level and p stands for domestic price level. Note that net exports decrease with a decrease in e because domestic goods become relatively expensive than the foreign goods. The second equation characterizing Mundell Fleming model is equation showing equilibrium in the money market or the LM curve equation given by M by P is equals to L a function of Y and I where M stands for nominal money supply. Note that money demand increases with real income or LY is greater than zero and decreases with interest rates or LI less than zero. The third equation characterizes perfect capital mobility case and that the domestic economy is a small open economy. Hence, domestic interest rates are determined by the world interest rates or I is equals to I star, where I stands for domestic interest rate and I star stands for world interest rate. Figure depicts the model. IS curve is as usual downward sloping and LM curve is as usual upward sloping. BP is the balance of payment curve showing that domestic interest rate I is equals to world interest rate I star. Slight change in interest rates will lead to huge capital flows bringing to two equals thus BP is a horizontal line. BP curve being horizontal implies that no change in interest is required to induce countervailing capital flows if any current account imbalance occurs. Just for the information of the readers, under no capital mobility case, BP line is vertical indicating that even very high differences in the world interest rate and domestic interest rate does not lead to any capital flows. Under imperfect capital mobility case, BP curve is upward sloping. Figure shows BP line under the three cases. BP1 is drawn under perfect capital mobility. 
BP2 is drawn under no capital mobility and BP3 is drawn under imperfect capital mobility case. Next, we come to the implications of perfect capital mobility to the economy under fixed and flexible exchange rates regimes when there is any policy change. First, we discuss fixed exchange rate regime and monetary policy change. Monetary policy change means a change in the money supply of the economy affecting the LM curve. Suppose central bank increases the money supply. The effect on the economy is shown through ISLM BP diagram An increase in money supply shifts LM curve from LM0 to LM1. Economy reaches point E1. This has two effects. First, it will increase the aggregate demand and output from Y0 to Y1 because individuals now have more money to spend. Given fixed price level, their real balances have increased and so aggregate demand and output. Second, an increase in money supply reduces the domestic interest rates below the world interest rates or I1 is less than I star. Due to perfect capital mobility, this induces investors to immediately withdraw funds from the domestic economy. Balance of payments deficit will occur leading to an increase in the demand for foreign currency which would be in the absence of central bank has led to changes in the exchange rates. To maintain the fixed exchange rates, the central bank will intervene to buy domestic currency in exchange of foreign currency at the official exchange rate. This will bring the exchange rates back to its original level and will also decrease the money supply such that it gets back to its original level. A decrease in money supply given fixed price level implies a fall in real money balances and hence reduction in aggregate demand and output. LM curve moves back to its original position to LM0 so long as nominal money supply and therefore the real money supply does not fall back to its original level the LM curve will remain to the right of the original position. Consequently, it will continue to intersect the unchanged IS curve at a domestic rate of interest which is less than the world rate of interest. Consequently, the inducement for capital outflow will continue thus exerting a downward pressure on exchange rates and forcing the central bank to intervene. It is the central bank intervention which causes the supply of money to shrink. It has to shrink all the way to its original level so that the LM curve 2 shifts back to its original position and the domestic rate of interest comes back to its original level of equality with the world rate of interest. Here, the level of output 2 is restored to its original level. Similar analysis will follow if there was a contractionary monetary policy change having no effect on output or interest rate. Thus, under perfect capital mobility and fixed exchange rate regime, monetary policy is ineffective. There is no change in output, price level, interest rates or the exchange rates. Money supply in this model is endogenous, that is, its level is determined by the model and not by the monetary authorities. This shows that with perfect capital flows, the fixed exchange rates an independent monetary policy cannot be followed. The trinity of perfect capital flows, fixed exchange rates and independent monetary policy is impossible. This has been reiterated at the end of this module. Then we study fixed exchange rate regime and fiscal policy change. Fiscal policy change means a change in the government expenditure and taxation which affect the IS curve. Suppose the government increases its fiscal expenditure. The effect on the economy is shown through ISLMBP diagram in figure. An increase in government expenditure considered as autonomous expenditure shifts IS curve from IS0 to IS1. Economy reaches point E1. 
This has two effects. First, it will increase the aggregate demand and output from Y0 to Y1 and second, it will raise the interest rate over world interest rate of I star to I1. In the domestic market, an increase in interest rates will lead to disequilibrium in the money market by making money demand less than money supply. In the balance of payments account, due to perfect capital mobility and domestic interest rate being greater than the foreign interest rate, there will be huge inflow of capital. Demand for domestic currency will rise, which in the absence of central bank intervention would have led to an appreciation of exchange rate. However, given the fixed exchange rate regime, the central bank has to intervene to maintain the exchange rate. Due to huge demand for domestic currency, government will purchase foreign currency in exchange of domestic currency. This will increase the money supply in the economy, shifting the LM curve to the right from LM0 to LM1. This increase in money supply will lower the interest rates to the world rate of interest, bringing money market in the equilibrium and also balancing the balance of payments account. In other words, government will purchase foreign currency and release domestic currency up to the point where domestic interest rates get back to the level of world interest rates of I star. The new equilibrium is attained at point E2. At this point, money market is in equilibrium and the balance of payments account is settled. Output has increased up to Y2. Increase of output from Y0 to Y1 is due to the fiscal policy change. Increase of output from Y1 to Y2 is due to the government intervention to maintain fixed exchange rate regime. A contractionary fiscal policy will have an opposite effect reducing the output level. Here again, money supply is determined by the model, that is, it is endogenous. The need to maintain the exchange rate at a given level forces the central bank to intervene and maintain the level of money supply such that the domestic rate of interest is equals to the world rate of interest so that there is no further scope of arbitrage opportunities in capital flows. Thus, under perfect capital mobility and fixed exchange rates regime, fiscal policy is fully effective. There is no change in the interest rates and the exchange rates, but output has increased. Note that this model is for short run. Thus, the output, both Y0 and increased output level of Y2, is below full employment level. Now, we move on to study the flexible exchange rate regime and monetary policy change. The effect of an expansionary monetary policy under flexible exchange rates regime on the economy is shown through ISLMBP diagram in figure 5. An increase in money supply shifts the LM curve rightwards from LM0 to LM1. Economy reaches point E1. This has two effects. First, it reduces the interest rate from I star to I1 and second, it increases the aggregate output or demand in the economy from Y0 to Y1. With the increase in money supply, for a given price level, individuals have more money. Their real balances have increased. Moreover, reduction in interest rates increases the money demand. Thus, in the money, the disequilibrium that was created by an increase in money supply has been restored by an increase in money demand by the fall in interest rate. However, on the external market, a decrease in domestic interest rate below the world interest rate makes securities denominated in domestic currency less attractive. Due to perfect capital mobility, economic agents will derive their funds out of the economy, leading to huge capital outflows. There will be a deficit on balance of payments account. This will depreciate the exchange rates. Since the exchange rates are flexible, there will be no intervention from the central bank to maintain the exchange rates at a given level. However, a depreciation of exchange rates will make the domestic goods cheaper in comparison to the foreign goods. This will raise the net exports of the economy. An increase in the net exports will raise the domestic aggregate output and demand. The depreciation of the domestic currency and the resultant increase in the net exports and the rightward shift in the IS curve will take place till there is a shift in IS curve from IS0 to IS1. In other words, this increase in aggregate demand or output will continue 
until the domestic interest rate has raised enough to get equalized to the world interest rate or i is equals to i star output will increase further from y1 to y2 the new equilibrium is attained at point e2 note that increase in output from y0 to y2 is the effect of increase in net exports which occur due to depreciation of exchange rates a contractionary monetary policy will have an opposite effect reducing the output and aggregate demand in the economy thus under perfect capital mobility and flexible exchange rates regime monetary policy is fully effective there is no change in the interest rates note that this model is again for the short run thus the output is below full employment level or that y2 is at the most at the full employment level we further discuss flexible exchange rate regime and fiscal policy change the effect of an expansionary fiscal policy under flexible exchange rates regime on the economy is shown through ISLMBP diagram in the figure an increase in government expenditure shifts the is curve from is0 to is1 economy reaches point e1 this has two effects first it raises the aggregate demand and output in the economy from y0 to y1 and second it raises the domestic interest rate over the world interest rates or i is greater than i star due to perfect capital mobility domestic securities become more attractive to the investors and hence there will be huge inflow of capital this will raise the demand for domestic currency and hence appreciate the domestic currency an appreciation of the domestic currency will make the domestic goods expensive in comparison to the foreign goods there will be a fall in net exports government expenditure increases but net exports falls the fall in net exports is equivalent to the increase in government expenditure making no change in output or aggregate demand in other words change in g is equals to minus change in nx thus is curve will return to its original position of is not there will be no change in output or interest rate here is a case of an increase in government expenditure crowding out net exports similar analysis will follow if there was a contractionary fiscal policy change having no effect on output or interest rate thus under perfect capital mobility and flexible exchange rates regime fiscal policy is ineffective there is no change in output and interest rates but exchange rates have depreciated because monetary policy is ineffective under fixed exchange rates regime when capital is perfectly mobile mundel fleming model directs us to what is known as impossible trinity this concept says that no economy can have the following three at the same time perfect capital mobility fixed exchange rates and an independent and efficient monetary policy in this module you have learned about the perfect capital mobility which means that capital can be freely transferred from one country to another with the minimum cost or even no cost without any barrier mundel fleming model is a short run model showing how the economy is affected under capital mobility using islm framework there are three equations in this model is curve equation lm curve equation and balance of payment equation which is also known as bp line under perfect capital mobility and fixed exchange rate regime monetary policy is ineffective under perfect capital mobility and flexible exchange rate regime fiscal policy is ineffective impossible trinity is a concept explaining that an economy cannot have fixed exchange rate regime perfect capital mobility and independent and effective monetary policy together at the same time